change lives, cambiar vidas, change lives, change organizations, cambiar vidas, change organizations, change organizations, change the world. So every Wednesday, I lug two chairs to someplace special on campus. It's actually a pretty normal place to most people who walk by. It's a little grassy spot in between an admin building and a library. It's usually sunny with some shade provided by a couple trees. And there's a sidewalk in front that in between classes teams with students. So I set these chairs facing each other. I sit in one chair, the other chair is empty. And I sit and I wait. With this sign on my feet. <laughs> so I sit and I wait for anybody who wants to, to talk. Now when I'm doing this, I keep this, this mantra in my mind. To listen, seek to understand first, don't judge, and above all, don't give advice. <laughs> so, when I sit there, people walk by, some of them smile, some of them laugh a little bit. Some people look at me like I'm crazy, but some people stop and talk, and those people have changed my life. People like the lady who sat in that empty seat and she leaned in and quietly told me her story on the verge of tears, and she'd been promoted at work, but she was still very unhappy. My initial advice to her would have been, suck it up. You just got promoted. <laughs> Quit whining. But what I didn't realize is that for somebody of her tenure, this promotion had been too little too late. And she still felt very underappreciated by her organization. Furthermore, she was the only one who had been promoted. And so now she was alienated from her former colleagues and friends. People like the homeless man who approached in a ratty sweatshirt and jeans. And he was a drug addict. <laughs> And he wanted desperately to get clean. I wanted to tell him, hey, just get your act together, go to AA, no worries. What I didn't realize is that he had never had a choice in the matter. He grew up in a household where both his parents were meth addicts. And he had done his first line of coke when he was only 13. Or people like the Haitian man in New York City who's out of work and feeling alone. I wanted to tell him, there's jobs out there, you need to work harder, go get it. And if you need some support, turn to your family. Again, what I didn't realize, he was actually highly educated, overqualified for most menial jobs that you can get. Furthermore, he had no one to turn to because his family back in Haiti had disowned him because he was gay and he had AIDS. The only person he could turn to was his lover back in Haiti. But he couldn't go back there because he needed to stay in the United States to receive the medical care that's only available here. So he was truly alone. So when I sit and listen to these stories, when I know that all I can do is listen, I've been wanting to do something like give free advice for a long time, ever since a friend of mine decided to take his own life. Afterwards, I kept thinking, what if I had been more present, more willing to listen, more available? Would the outcome have been any different? and my friend might still be alive. I was struck by the fact that in big cities like New York and San Francisco, you can bump into literally hundreds of people in a day. With current technology, you can reach out and you can, can communicate with thousands of people in an instant. And yet there's still millions of people who feel alone and depressed and disconnected. So for me, giving free advice is a small step in the right direction. With so many ways to communicate, we need to find ways to communicate with more empathy, to cut through the noise, and to say something meaningful, and to be truly present for others. So in doing free advice, I have actually learned a couple things. The first one is obviously, you actually don't give advice. Most people know the right answer. They just need somebody to walk along that path with them, to listen to them, to reassure them. I've learned that most people who are mean or angry aren't bad people. 
they're just having a bad day. I've learned that my initial judgments of people are usually wrong, especially when those judgments are harsh. I've learned to ask more questions and to be a little more understanding, and I've learned to write more letters. Most importantly, I've learned that everyone has someone in their lives who needs somebody to hear them, to listen to them. And it's up to us to make ourselves available and open for those people. Now, sometimes when I'm sitting out giving free advice and I'm leaning in, intently listening to somebody's story, trying to understand, trying to ask the right questions, trying to be there for this person, I glance up and I see that a line is formed <laughs> of people waiting to talk. When I think about this, I realize that if it's just a guy in an empty seat and a sign, you might sit down. It may seem like a novelty you want to talk, see, maybe see how crazy this person is, what, they, what are they selling. But when there's a line, it says something completely different. It says that there's a huge need for something like this, that there's so many people out there that don't feel like they have somebody in their own lives that they can turn to to talk, that instead they sit and they wait in the line to talk to a stranger. So I'd encourage you to give free advice in your own lives, challenge you to do so. You don't need a sign, and you don't need to talk to strangers. You can do some very simple things. Write a letter to somebody you care about, not necessarily to say thank you or congratulations, just make sure you say what you really need to say. Invite a friend out to coffee, but make sure there's no agenda to discuss, but keep the mantra in mind. Listen, seek to understand first, don't judge, don't give advice, and be truly present for others. Thank you.